You say, come on, Brother Hovind, you believe in fire-breathing dragons? Yeah. I got four reasons why I believe in them. Let me tell you my reasons why, and then you can tell me all the reasons you don't believe in them. I'll be glad to have a nice discussion with you about this. But reason number one, it's pretty hard to read that passage in the Bible without coming to the conclusion that this critter could breathe fire. Wouldn't you say that's the obvious interpretation of that verse? I mean, if you gave that to 5,000 people, all of them would come up with the same idea of what it's trying to say. Wouldn't they? That's the obvious interpretation. The Bible says the critter could breathe fire. Secondly, there are hundreds of legends about fire-breathing dragons. Why do so many countries have legends about fire-breathing dragons? I mean, don't you think that's kind of a coincidence? If they're just making up the story, why didn't somebody have a fire-breathing hamster or something? Hmm? Why, why is it always fire-breathing dragon? Kind of a strange coincidence, don't you think? Thirdly, it is chemically possible to do this. To mix chemicals together and they burn their enemy. That's what Bombardier Beetle does. You can get World Book Encyclopedia, Science Here 81 edition, and read about the Bombardier Beetle. They've got this beetle glued down with a drop of yellow wax on his back and a paper clip stuck in there. He's clamped into a ring stand, so he'll cooperate for the photographer. And then they reached up with the tweezers and pinched his front leg. The beetle is thinking, man, there's that ant. He's biting my leg again. Those guys never learn. This beetle has a cannon back near his hind end. He swings it around at the enemy and <laughs> blasts his enemy with 212 degree chemicals, the temperature of boiling water. Now, where does a beetle get something 212 degrees? What's he got, a furnace back there? The ejection system on a bombardier beetle shows basic similarity to the pr propuls pulse jet propulsion mechanism of the German V-1 buzz bomb of World War II. What the beetle has evolved is an intermittent explosive process that fires 500 pulses per second. The explosive energy comes from the mixing of two separate fluids, hydroquinones and hydrogen peroxide with oxidative enzymes. The fundamental question, of course, is how can many small random mutations contribute to the development of mechanisms of the pulse jet, its two fuels, the pumps, the fuel reservoirs, the control system, when only the complete perfected system has survival value? Although creationists argue that the theories of evolution and natural selection are unconvincing here, it is still possible that atheistic factors still beyond our ken are operating, and what we really need is a better theory of evolution. <laughs> That's grasping at straws. How on earth could a beetle evolve something so complex? What he's got back in his hind end, he has two compartments where he stores these chemicals, hydroquinones and hydrogen peroxide. If those two get together, they explode. <laughs> Now, the beetle does not want them to explode in his hind end. <laughs> that would be uncomfortable. So, he has another chemical that he mixes in there. It's called the inhibitor. It prevents the reaction from taking place. But now it doesn't do any good because he sprays it on his enemies and they lick it off and keep chewing off his leg. So, he has a fourth chemical that he sprays in at the last possible second. The fourth chemical neutralizes the third chemical and allows the first two to explode. Is that too complicated? There's four chemicals. The first two explode. The third one makes them not explode, and the fourth one takes away the third one, and the first two explode. Now, timing is very important for the beetle. <laughs> if he forgets to put the neutralizer in, or the inhibitor in, one time, he's history. If he puts the neutralizer in too soon, he's got a problem. And this beetle, as it slowly evolved over billions of years, you would hear them exploding in the jungle as they practiced their <laughs> chemistry. And they would gather together for the funeral. And Grandma would say, kids, take a look at your Uncle Herman. Look at him good, boys and girls. He blew his whole hind end right off. Do you want to die like that? No, Grandma. Well, then quit goofing off and pay attention in school. Someday we're going to be a fire-breathing beetle, you know. <laughs> no, listen, folks. If you think Bombardier Beetle evolved by chance, you need help. <laughs> he doesn't know nothing about chemistry. He's never even been to kindergarten. His whole body is only that big. His brain is even smaller. All he knows is, if somebody bites you, squirt them. They'll leave, if they're able. It even works on big enemies. Here's a toad about to eat bombardier beetle. Picture number two, beetle is in the toad's mouth. Picture three, beetle is back out. <laughs> and the toad's tongue is laying on the floor. And he's backing off saying, whoo, somebody call the cook. Ugh. 
Too many jalapenos on that one. Man, we got to lay off this Mexican food for a while. Okay, my uh, fourth reason for believing in fire-breathing dragons is some of the dinosaurs had strange compartments in their head. Nobody knows for sure what they're for. The Parasaurolophus, for instance, had this weird bump on the back of his head. It's an enlargement of his sinus passages. It's hollow, and it's connected to his nasal passages. They call him the hollow-headed dinosaur. Even T-Rex had a head the size of a Volkswagen and the brain the size of a baseball. The rest of it's full of plumbing connected to his sinuses, which means if he stored chemicals up there, he could spray them out his nose or mouth at will, or at anybody, it wouldn't have to be will, but he could spray them out, and it could have been a fire-breathing dragon. It is chemically possible. It is anatomically possible. Historically, certainly something happened, because there's an awful lot of history, and the Bible says there was one. Now, those are my four reasons. If you've got reasons you don't believe in it, I'd be glad to hear them. Next one.